friends, I'm here to read you the next two chapters in Escape from Mr. Lemoncello's Library. Chapter 50. The memory box is down in the stacks, Haley told Kyle, so he raced down to the basement. That very long, very wide cellar was just as he remembered it, filled with tidy rows to floor-to-ceiling shelf units. Kyle looked up at the closet, the closest security camera. Where to next? I hid it way over on the far side, said Haley through the ceiling speakers, on a shelf near that horrible book sorting machine. Kyle hurried up at the center aisle. Suddenly, a heavy metal bookcase thundered in from the right, sliding like it was on roller skates. Watch it, shouted Haley. The bookcase skidded to a screeching halt, blocking Kyle's path forward. Go left, suggested Miguel. The whole team was watching and cheering him on. Kyle went left. Then another steel shelving unit shuffled in from the side. Jump back, shouted Akimi. The shelf slammed to a stop two inches in front of Kyle's feet. Kyle, are you okay? Yeah, this is a little like a hedge maze in the Triwizard Tournament, said Sierra. Huh? Harry Potter, book four, the Goblet of Fire. Right, I need to read that one, too. Kyle, of course, realized he'd just discovered the most extreme part of this extreme challenge. Each one of the sliding floor-to-ceiling bookcases was loaded down with heavy cardboard cartons, books, or metal storage bins. They probably weighed several tons each. If Kyle was in the wrong place when a shelving unit came shooting in from the right side, he'd be flattened like a pancake under a steamroller. Warning, announced the official sounding lady in the ceiling. You have 12 minutes to complete this challenge. He had to keep going. Like Mr. Lemoncello said, there was no turning back now. Unless, of course, he wanted to go home a loser. Ha, never. Kyle jogged up the alleyway between the two walls of bookshelves. Left turn, Haley shouted, now. The wall on Kyle's right swung open, revealing six swiveling sections, each pivoting panel maybe 20 feet long, all skittering sideways and gliding backwards to create new walls and re reconfigured pathways. You've only got like 10 more yards to go, Coach Haley. Kyle weaved his way around the randomly shuffling shelves, but as soon as he was on any kind of straightway, the walls started to rearrange themselves again. Finally, Kyle scooted down, scooted down a corridor so tight he had to turn sideways to squeeze through. The wall stuttered to a stop, and the voice made another announcement. Warning, you have eight minutes left to complete this challenge. I'm trapped, Kyle shouted. There's no exit. None of his teammates said anything for a real long time. And finally, Sierra's voice rang out of the overhead speakers. Put your hand on the right wall, she said. What? Why? When I was little, I played a lot of maze games. If the walls are connected, all you have to do is keep one hand in contact with one wall at all times at all times, and eventually you'll reach the exit to a return to the entrance. Do it, Coach Takimi. It'll work, bro, added Miguel. So Kyle, Kyle kept his right hand firmly planted on the right wall of the shelves and started inching his way forward. Go, Kyle, cheered Haley. Hug that wall, hug that wall. The passageway widened. Kyle kept his hand glued to the right wall and went around corners, through, switch, through switchbacks, until finally he stepped into an opening near the book re return to conveyor belt. You made it, shouted Haley. Woohoo! And all the shelves streamed back into their orderly church pew positions. Good, said Kyle. Getting out of here, getting out should be easier than getting in. Where's the box, Haley? I put it on a shelf. On the shelf. Which one? That one. Warning, announced the calm female voice in the ceiling. You have 30 minutes left to complete this challenge. Kyle stared up at a nearby camera. Um, Haley, what exactly am I looking for? A cardboard box in a drawer. Okay, there are like a billion of those. I flagged it with a piece of pink tissue. Kyle raced to a shelf. Two minutes, announced the calm lady. This one, said Kyle. Yes, look in the steel drawer. I thought you said it was cardboard. It is. Open the lid. Not that one. The other one. This one. No, the one under it. One minute. Hurry, Kyle. I'm hurrying. Flip it open. Kyle did as he was told. He flipped open the lid on a steel drawer and found a battered boot box. Every member of Kyle's team shouted the same thing. Grab it! And run, added Akimi. Kyle did. He tucked the boot box under his arm and ran like he had never run before. He sprinted across the basement floor. He raced up the steps, two at a time. When he hit the rotunda, his heart was pounding against his ribs. Thirty seconds. He speed skated across the marble floor. It was so slippery that he lost his balance. He fell forward, dropped the box. It flew out of his hands and hit the sack floor and slid like a hockey puck across the threshold into the community reading B. Reading meeting room B, a buzzer sounded. Time is up, announced the calm voice. Yo, shouted Miguel, you made it, bro. And Kyle started breathing again. Chapter 51. Having made his request, all Charles could do was wait. Apparently, said Mr. Lemoncello when he came back into the rotunda, your Uncle Jimmy is a very, very busy man. Reminds me of a spider I once knew. But it is a Sunday morning, so we will attempt to track him down at home. 
Thank you, sir. I told Uncle Jimmy to stand by. That I might need him that I might need him this weekend. And now, whoosh, he's as elusive as the wind in the willows. You'll have to discuss this with him the next time your family gets together for Thanksgiving dinner. Now, if you will excuse me, it is currently 9.58 a.m., almost time to reopen the Dewey Decimal System chambers. Mr. Lemoncello opened a filing cabinet and pulled out a megaphone. Is there some room that you should be ready to run to? Isn't there some clue or book you need to find or get? Just one, said Charles, and I need my Uncle Jimmy to tell me where it is. Will you please keep looking for him, please? Of course, said Mr. Lemoncello, pointed to a smudge on Charles's shirt. If you like, I will also have Al Capone do your shirts. All Charles could do was nod, smile, and wonder when Al Capone had opened a laundry.